Now, what is binocular visual dysfunction? Uh, well, uh, we don't know everything about it yet. Uh, but what we what we do know is that uh, is that it results in the two eyes not being perfectly aligned, and in some cases, it's a very subtle misalignment. Oftentimes, probably most of the time, it's a vertical misalignment, not a horizontal misalignment. That vertical misalignment um, that may not even be perceptible um, to an observer, yet let alone uh, to the patient, um, causes a great deal of distress. The body doesn't like double imagery, so it's doing whatever it can to avoid it. So it's overusing the eye muscles. The problem has always been that the vertical misalignments are very hard to find. The amount seems to be very small, and the amounts that we're finding are below what are considered even needing treatment at this point. What we're doing with our prismatic lenses is we're actually realigning the images. Once that happens, those muscles get to relax. Once those muscles relax, everything backs off, which is why our patients on average get about an 80% reduction of symptoms. It's almost like they're used to the eye issues overall, so maybe they'll close one eye to get rid of the double vision or the misalignment issues. But it's mostly you have to be sensitive to the other symptoms. It's the headache, it's the neck pain, it's the nausea. It doesn't seem to make sense at all. What I see in a lot of the people who come in that I end up referring is, is like a cluster of, I'll call them like phantom problems. They have problems and they can't explain them. So to them, it's a mystery, it's a phantom. They'll complain of certain types of anxiety, social anxiety, especially out in the world, in crowds. The other obvious things are headaches that don't seem to get, go away even though you've gone to the finest headache clinics, a sense of dizziness or brain fog, or the one that really is very important to chiropractors and myself is a neck problem or neck to shoulder problem that is refractory to treatment where acupuncture, manipulation, everything is done, they feel better, they get off the table and say, oh, I feel so good. They come back and in an hour, a day, certainly by the end of the week, I need to see you again. Doctors do what they can do. Uh, doctors are very, very good at uh, prescribing medications. They treat the symptoms. Uh, they'll treat with anti-anxiety medications. They'll treat with anti-nausea medications. Uh, they'll treat with uh, tranquilizers. Uh, in some cases, they'll treat with uh, anti-convulsants, uh, off-label indications um, for, for neck pain and other, uh, other uh, sources of pain, headache pain. Now, the problem with that is is, is fairly evident, uh, you're treating the symptoms and not the cause. Uh, and that's understandable if you don't know what the cause is. If you don't know that there's a better way to treat it. For me, learning what binocular vision disorder was and then being able to do something about it, having a tool or, or someone to refer to that could do something about it has made a huge change in my practice. And usually in the office, they get almost an immediate answer if adding PRISM is going to help. And they usually know within a few weeks of having a pair of eyeglasses if it's the correct prescription or if it needs to be adjusted. When people get glasses with PRISM, it's like having an orthotic in a shoe. The body has to adjust to it, and typically you can't take all the correction right away. So when someone has an orthotic, it takes them months and months, and they slowly get the foot straightened away. Well, it's the same thing with the eye, so people don't get all the prismatic correction right away, and it may take two or three before they get to their landing spot. And once you know about it, it's amazing how many people are walking around suffering who could right now be feeling great. Most times people will say, I guess it can't hurt. Let's give it a try. It's just another vision evaluation. And then it turns out to be something much more. And if you have a vision issue, it's like having a, a, the world is constantly shifting around on you. It tires you out. If you are stressed, if you are anxious, your attention is going to wander. You're going to lose your patience after eight hours of school. Kids come here and they'll say the letters jump and blur, or they just get fatigued and their, their friends will be able to do their homework in 10, 15 minutes, but you're fighting with them to do their homework in 20 minutes, 40 minutes, and then you're fighting again to get them back to do their homework. Or they're falling asleep, their eyes are getting tired and sleepy during those times. Um, their handwriting is poor. A lot of times they get labeled learning disabled. So this patient came in and she saw me like this. I was blurry and wavy and jiggly, and after putting on the trial prism glasses, she was able to draw me like this, the same 
same day. Their eyes don't work together and they don't focus at the same plane where their eyes are pointing. And they can't tell you that because that's what they've been doing the whole entire time. My primary task as an ADHD coach is to help them succeed in school. And obviously to succeed in school you need to be able to read. You need to be able to uh, study and you need eyes for that. So what I find is I find a much higher percentage of people who have vision issues. I have taken to giving questionnaires to, to the, the, the young people that I serve to screen them to see if they may have vision issues. When I bring up Vision Specialists of Michigan as a recommendation, some of the families report that they've done vision therapy with other specialists. Vision therapy being a way to retrain the eye to brain connection. And many have gotten some benefit, but the problems are still persisting. So they're a little skeptical about seeing somebody else for the same problem. But I explained to them that the evaluation is very different and the recommendation coming out of that evaluation is very different and that it's not a therapy it's a set of, of glasses. For people who have demonstrated binocular vision difficulties uh, these glasses uh, can provide great benefit. Not for everybody. We, we have to be careful that we don't just you know presume that these glasses are a panacea. But for people with demonstrated binocular vision issues, of which I am one, I think there's some compelling evidence that's starting to mount. These kids would never have been helped before, and that's really, really, really important. That's so satisfying. It's unbelievable. And when you see the desperation in these parents' face, and then you see in your first progress visit, somebody going from, you know, a 10-year-old going from barely reading to advanced reading in less than nine months and the parents are crying and happy it's like you know it's like amazing what I've come to realize over the past six years is that um, the majority of people that I see with uh, with head injuries um, have a problem with their eyes um, or at least the the consequence is that the eyes aren't working together the way that they should be. The studies that I've been working on with my partner actually find about 90% of patients with TBIs have issues with eye misalignment. It's almost getting to the point where eye misalignment is going to be one of the things that kind of decide whether or not the patient did suffer a traumatic brain injury. So there's all different ways the brain can be injured and what happens when they're coming out of the original injury is they have all kinds of symptoms like pain, brain pain, headache pain, uh, dizziness, uh, nausea, and as they begin moving those symptoms can get worse and sometimes they don't get better because something is not working right. There is an order that makes sense to do when you're when you're talking about their whole rehab process, and so typically they wouldn't think of of going to an eye doctor as one of the one of the big priorities. But I will say to them that, you know, when you're talking about issues like being able to get rid of your headaches or improve your headaches, dizziness, balance issues, uh, reading comprehension, anxiety, etc. If we can get some place that will help take care of some of those symptoms, certainly that's a high priority for us. Typically, the, the order of business for me is right after I see a patient. If, if I feel that a patient has binocular visual dysfunction, um, they're gonna get referred right away. And I'm not interested in putting the patient into uh, cognitive rehabilitation until, until we've resolved these issues. Uh, because it won't be effective. Well, I had one woman who was a real estate agent and she was a manager in a very busy real estate office. And when you have a brain injury, you have a hard time keeping up with a pace like that. And she would get dizzy and she would wobble on her feet. And so she wasn't being able to perform her job well. And so she um, came in and got her um, eyeglasses straightened out and I don't know if brain injury patients ever make it back to 100%, but she was at least 99 and thrilled. And I have to say that uh, early on, uh, before I uh, had my own experience on this, I, I, uh, I had some skepticism 
Um, I thought, oh well, when I talk to the patient, I'll get a different story. Well, that just, that just didn't happen. Um, on the contrary, um, the patients report um, having um, such a positive experience. Over 10 years, I've sent about 100 patients to vigilance specialists, and the results have been great. I mean, there are a few patients that are non-responders, and that's true in any subspecialty area of, of healthcare. Most of the patients really have a, a significant difference in their ability to function. Once you start to see with your own eyes the effectiveness of this, uh, as a clinician, you naturally want to be a part of it, number one, because clinicians, we should be in the business of making lives better for our patients. Uh, and if we can do it without using medication, without side effects, we owe it to our patients to do it. And, um, and, that's, uh, and, and that's really it. That's what we're in it for.